Hey guys, before you plant a seed or stock any fish into your aquaponics system, you can't do anything without dissolved oxygen. So today I want to tell you what you really need to know about dissolved oxygen and about a piece of equipment that you need if you're doing any type of commercial growing. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Evan Grow on YouTube where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. As I said, the topic of today's episode is all about dissolved oxygen, so let's get right into it. Dissolved oxygen is obviously needed in many areas in aquaponics, including your fish health, your plant health, and the microbial activity in your system that filters your water. Therefore, it's important that you provide it in as many areas as you can. The main areas that you're gonna provide oxygen into your system are obviously your fish tanks, any type of biofilter, any type of mineralization tank, and your deep water culture beds. Some areas that you don't want to put it are areas where you want solid particles to settle, such as settling tanks or clarifiers. A widely accepted industry value for dissolved oxygen is five parts per million. Yes, there is this concept of supersaturation that occurs when dissolved oxygen is above like 14 parts per million. In my seven years of doing aquaponics, I've never even been close to that amount, so I wouldn't necessarily worry about that, but I would worry about it becoming too low. The testing procedures for dissolved oxygen, frankly, are a nightmare. In my opinion, the liquid dissolved oxygen test is pretty inconvenient to perform. You have to like collect a sample and get all the air out of the vial, and then you have to titrate different solutions into the bottle. It's, it's not very easy. So the way that I test dissolved oxygen is through a dissolved oxygen meter. But again, not a very convenient test to perform because dissolved oxygen meters frequently run two, three, four, five hundred dollars and and above. But unless you're a commercial facility operating with thousands of fish, I honestly, I don't think I would buy one. In my time in aquaponics, when my fish are low in dissolved oxygen, I'll see them at the surface gasping for air. If you see that in your system, the oxygen in your system is probably critically low. But if everything seems to be going according to plan, if the fish are happy, they're eating, they're acting normal, you probably have enough dissolved oxygen in that system. And again, a good rule of thumb is just to provide as much dissolved oxygen as you can across your system. So let's talk about some of the equipment that you can use for this. I definitely would not recommend any type of aquarium pumps for any systems larger than 100 gallons. Sure, you can probably get away with a little aquarium pump on a 200 gallon tank with a little tiny grow bed, but it's not going to perform at its best level. I'll link a few air pumps that I think are adequate for one or two fish tanks in the description below. But in my opinion, if you're gonna do aquaponics, you're gonna wanna invest in a, a decent air pump. The first two years that I did aquaponics, I used one of these Mito linear piston air pumps. It did a good job of aerating three to four fish tanks, but once I started branching that air off into a biofilter, into a plant bed, it really became a lot weaker and didn't do a good job. So the piece of equipment that you definitely need if you're gonna do any form of large scale aquaponics is a regenerative blower. This one is a 1.75 horsepower Sweetwater blower. I've been running this thing continuously for five years, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It has not failed on me one time. I bought this thing in 2015, I believe, and I think the price was less than $400. It's a little bit more expensive than that now, but honestly, it has paid for itself. The only maintenance that I've done to it is clean these air filters out once every few months, but this is the most valuable piece of equipment that I have in this system. These things are awesome. You can mount them vertically or horizontally to fit the needs of your system. They do blow hot air, so you're gonna need one of these heat dissipating pipes to absorb some of that heat. The good thing is if you're raising a warm water fish, that hot air will actually warm your water temperature one or two degrees but you can see what it did to this PVC pipe coming out. It cooked it a little bit. But this 1.75 horsepower blower, I aerate my entire 32 foot long deep water culture bed, a biofilter, and six fish tanks. And it has no issues with that. And I push that air over 70 feet. So what I'm trying to say is this thing is legit. For the longevity and efficiency of this equipment, can't beat it. If you use tubing, I definitely wouldn't go smaller than 3 8 inch inside diameter. That's what this is. And you always want to make sure that you use hose clamps on any type of connection. If one tube pops out of your line, you can lose pressure in the entire system. So you definitely want to plan for failure, buy hose clamps, tie these things down extra tight. I've had a few instances where just a little kink in tubing has sabotaged my entire system. So I try not to use tubing if I can. I try to just stick with PVC pipe. It's not gonna come undone. 
it's more reliable and uh, I sleep better at night with it. So once you have your tubing or your PVC pipe, you're gonna need air stones. Definitely invest in some good air diffusers. They have smaller pore spaces that produce more bubbles and they're less fragile. I'm sure that you guys have all bought air stones from a pet store and they shatter. These are pretty durable and you just gotta pressure wash them out every year. Durable, reliable, does a good job. I've also used these air discs. I've attached them to the top of buckets in my system. I have a video explaining that coming at a later date. These things work pretty well too. I just don't use them anymore. They're pretty neat and they screw into fittings as well. So that's pretty much it guys. Those are some basic things when it comes to dissolved oxygen. Definitely never worry about providing your fish with too much oxygen. I've never had that problem in seven years, but I have had the problem of not providing them enough oxygen. So invest in a piece of equipment like a regenerative blower that you know is gonna get the job done. Thanks for watching guys.